We're ready to begin the assembly now. We're going to start off by uh, checking the uh, end gaps for the uh, oil ring and the compression rings. Um, to do that, we will insert the ring into the piston, line it up, and check them with this feeler gauge here. Okay, if the rings check out okay, then we're going to begin putting the rings onto the piston. And um, you'll notice on the piston there's two slots on the top about the same size. Those are for the compression rings. And then the uh, bottom ring is a little wider. It's the oil ring. It has some holes in it that go through to the bot in inside of the piston. And some holes back here. You can see they go all the way through. All right, these, uh, these three rings here are the oil rings. You'll see there's one separator ring and there's two thin weight rings. They're thinner than the uh, compression rings. The first time I did this, I thought it was pretty straightforward. You just put the separator ring in between them and put them on, but um, I had a lot of problems later on and um, I couldn't find anything in the documentation. It may be there, but I couldn't find it about um, how to install these. Dave over at Tudor's Performance Engines showed me something that I want to share with you. It may help you save a lot of problems. So this this ring here, okay, this is the um, the separator ring and when it goes on, you know, it's not overlapped or this way or this way. It's going to be butted up like this. And in, in the very bottom of the separator rings, each little section has a little ledge and you can hardly see it with, a, with your eye. I don't think the video camera is picking it up. You can feel your fingernail. But um, on that ledge is where, the, um, is where the oil ring rides. The oil ring will not go all the way down to the cylinder to touch the inside of the ring. I mean all the way down to the uh, piston. It will ride up here on this oil ring, on the separator ring. So when it's when it's prop, and the same thing on the other side. There's a, there's a ledge on the other side too. So when it's properly installed, the um, the the inside diameter of these little thin rings will be a little bit bigger, a little bit yeah, a little bit bigger than the uh, than the separator ring because the, uh, the, these thin oil rings will not go all the way in and touch the, uh, the bottom of the, the groove. Okay, I spent a little bit of time on that, but it was important. It gave me a lot of problems. You'll know when it's right because they'll be lo locked together and they'll all move together and you'll also be able to compress it. If you can't compress these rings when they're on the, uh, um, the piston, then there's something wrong. You have to take a look at it. The, uh, one of these um, these rings may have gotten slipped alongside of the separator ring and be down in too far. So you need to get that right, or you'll never um, be able to get the uh, piston to the cylinder. Okay, these two rings are the compression rings, and they're not interchangeable. One of them is, goes on the top, and one goes in the middle there. Um, the shiny one here is um, the top ring, and the second one is a little darker. It is the um, the second compression ring and also is sometimes called the oil scraper ring. So they have to be in this order. This is the top and this is the middle. And the, the rings also have a, a upside down on them. You, you, know, you, you have to turn them one way or the other. And um, on this, this uh, oil scraper ring, if you looked at the end of it, um, you wouldn't actually see it, but it's not completely square. It's, one of this the outside is at a little bit of a taper. I think that's what makes it do the oil scraping. Anyway, that has to be turned right, and um, the way to know if it's turned right is the manufacturers put a little mark at the end, right at the end uh, of the ranges before the uh, of the gap. Um, I don't think you'll be able to see it on this one, but you can see it on yours if you have really good eyes. And I'll insert a still picture to show you what it looks like. Um, this one has a R on it for the manufacturer. On this side it says 50, probably 0.50 it's because this is bored out um, half a millimeter oversize. Okay, so that is 
the uh, compression rings. The next step is going to be to set the um, to check the the end gap. So you take one of the uh, we're going to do that with the, for the oil rings and the compression rings. And um, to do that, what you're going to do is put the ring into the cylinder. Then you push it down oh, about three quarters of an inch or so with the um, the piston to make sure that everything is lined up straight. You're going to take the um, feeler gauge and this oil ring is set between three tenths of a millimeter and nine tenths of a millimeter. So the three tenths of a millimeter, it should go into the gap. See the gap is right there. So it should go in. Now we're going to begin putting the, uh, the rings on the piston. We'll, we will start with the oil ring, with the separator oil ring. Okay, the two ends should just be butted up. It should not be overlapping anywhere. Then we'll start with one of the thin rings. Okay, I put that one on the bottom. And I'll put the other thin ring on the top. separate ring. You'll know when you when you got it right because the whole unit will be locked together, these three rings, and they'll float around and you'll be able to push it down, you know, anywhere around it. You'll be able to squeeze it in, you can see the end gaps collapsing a little bit. If there's a part of it that won't go in all the way, take a look at it. Maybe the um, uh, the separator ring is overlapped or something, but um, wait till you get it right to where it floats around like this before you continue. All right, I'm going to set these down with the manufacturer's mark up, and I'm going to ready. I'm ready to start installing the um, the rings. I'll start with the uh, the second compression ring, the oil scraper ring. I'm going to put some oil on the cylinder. I mean, on the piston to try to make it real smooth. Um, these rings are very very brittle. I already broke one, so I don't want to do that again. Okay, I'm going to move it down another notch. Okay, I got it on without breaking it. You do the same thing with the with the other uh, the other ring, the top compression ring. The rings are on the piston now. 
So what you want to do is stagger the um, the end gaps so they're not lined up. If they're all, if the end gaps are all lined up, you'd have a path for a blow by to go right through. So for example, if the um, if the oil ring is at six o'clock, you'd put the um, one of the compression rings at at uh, ten o'clock and the other one at two o'clock, so that they're staggered 120 degrees apart. Next, we're ready to put the um, uh, piston onto the connecting rod. And to do that, we'll need the uh, piston and the wrist pin and two of these wrist pin clips, sir clips. When you install the sir clips into uh, the piston, you, you, you don't want this end gap here to line up with the, uh, the cutout in the bottom of the piston. If you do, it would hold the, uh, the wrist pin in but the problem is you would never be able to get it out again. I'm going to put this wrist pin clip here on the side and then I'm going to hold it down with my thumb. So you see the pin will go across that gap there. The clip will. And then I twist it in with the, uh, with the screwdriver. Okay, I heard it click in so it's in there now. Okay, for the next steps, we'll go over to the engine. Now we're ready to attach the piston to the uh, connecting rod. And first we'll get everything oiled up really well. You see on the top of the piston there's two like partial circles. One's larger than the other. These are cutouts for the valves. And um, the larger one is the intake valve and on this one it also says in there. That'll go up the top, up towards the frame because that's where the intake is, where the carburetor is going to go. Put it on that way. Put this over the connecting rod and then you're going to insert the uh, wrist pin and look for that hole in the connecting rod and it should go right in as soon as you find it. Alright, now we're going to put the other circular clip on. And you notice the paper towels here because it's easy to drop something inside the engine and that would really be a disaster. We have to take the engine apart. Okay, that's it. Next we'll be putting the cylinder on. 